InVivo and Atlas TI are analysis softwares for coding or tagging qualitative data with themes or codes. Qualitative researchers are often analyzing text resources, so listed here are some examples of textual resources that these softwares can be used to analyze. They can also be used to analyze audiovisual materials such as these listed below. So you can see that there's a wide variety of qualitative data sources that can be analyzed in the software. Saldana, a respected qualitative researcher, describes a code as often a short word or phrase that symbolically assigns a summative, salient, essence capturing, and or evocative attribute for a portion of language-based or visual data. In Atlas TI, you use the code feature to make codes, but in InVivo, you use the node feature to create codes. This excerpt from the coding overview video we asked you to watch particularly stood out to me as it says coding is both a means of dividing your data into manageable segments as well as a means of allowing you quick access to the relevant data when you need it. And I drew those red boxes around manageable and quick access because I think that's what researchers want most out of using a qualitative data analysis software to make the coding process manageable and to facilitate quick access to their data. So if you think about manually coding textual data, this is what that might look like. So you print out the data, you read it, and then you underline relevant passages of text and then code or tag them with a theme or a code by writing that theme or code name in the margins. And this might be fairly manageable and allow you quick access to your data if you have smaller projects or if you are just so technophobic or just find programs like Atlas TI and InVivo insurmountable in terms of learning them, there's nothing wrong with doing manual coding and, and analyzing your data manually. But as projects grow or the complexity of your coding increases, you know, you might find yourself graduating to trying to use a different color of highlighter for every code you have. But then you'll find that you'll run out of colors or you soak your paper with wet highlighter. And how do you manage when one passage of text that you want to code could be coded at multiple codes, so you would have to use multiple highlighters. That's not going to work very well. Or maybe you decide I'm going to use different colored post-it notes for each node. Again, finite colors of post-it notes may become a problem. And you're going to stick those on your piles of paper that you have in this one room in your house that is dedicated now to your research project. But then what if one of those post-it notes falls off on the floor and you don't remember where it goes? So you may start to feel like this. And what's happened in making your data analysis manageable and allowing you quick access to your data? So this is where I think using an analysis software such as InVivo or Atlas TI begins to look very appealing. So I'm going to use some screenshots from InVivo to demonstrate the utility of using a qualitative data analysis software. So for starters, you have one project file into which you import all of your separate data sources. So you only have one file to keep track of. So in this example, this is actually a project of my own. I was analyzing 12 different students' assignments from an entire semester of a class I taught. So I compiled all the separate students' assignments into separate data sources and identified them by an ID number such as S1, S2, etc. And I imported all those sources into InVivo to start my analysis. So to open an individual data source, you would just double click on that source. So I would double click on S1, for example. So the data source will open and then I can start reading my data. And when I see a passage of text that looks interesting or relevant that I want to code, I would just highlight that data, right click on it and then select code. 
and then I either could code it at one or multiple nodes that I had already previously created in coding or I could also code it a brand new code. So I have that opportunity to kind of do new coding for new themes on the fly or set up coding ahead of time and then apply those codes to my data. So this process in and of itself self, is pretty much analogous to the process of manually coding. So in other words, in vivo will not read your data for you and do the coding for you nor does Atlas TI or m pretty much any other qualitative data analysis software. You still have to read your data and you have to use your own research questions or your own analytical framework to guide what segments of the data are relevant and should be coded and what codes or themes you want to look for in your data. So as you do your coding, you're going to start developing a coding scheme or a coding tree that might look something like this in InVivo. So this reflects the codes or the themes that I've created and coded for. But it also represents how many sources I've coded at a given node and how many individual passages of text or what InVivo calls references that I've coded at any given node. So for example, if we look at the node of no limits to access to information, it shows that I've coded 11 of my total 12 data sources at least once at that code. So I've for each of those 11 sources there's at least one passage text in each of those that has been coded at that theme of no limits to access to information. And then I can also see that I have 75 individual passages of text that I've actually coded at this theme of no limits to access to information. So this is just nice in and of itself that I have this nice quick snapshot of that almost all of my data sources, all except one, at least once those students said something that I coded for them expressing there should be no limits to access to information. And then I can see that there were actually 75 individual passages of text that spoke to this theme as compared to the need for limits theme and the conflicted regarding limits themes which was much smaller. So I kind of have a sense that the no limits theme seems to be more prevalent. Now because I'm doing double or sorry because I'm doing qualitative research I want to see what they're actually saying. I want to know you know how are they talking about no no limits to access to information. So I can just double click then on this node to open a brief view of those individual passages text sorted out by the individual data sources. So if when I would double click on that, this is what I would see. It's called the reference view. So it shows me the individual passage of text divided out by the data source. So I can see that for student one or who's ID'd as S1, I coded five passages of text at this node of no limits to access to information. And I can read those individual passage texts that I coded. Now if I want to see those passages of text within the larger context of the whole source, I can click that hot linked source title up there that I have the um, red box around to then go to the full source. And then once I'm at that full source, it will show me the highlighted passage of text that correspond to that code of no limits to access to information. And then I can turn on this feature in InVivo called coding stripes that then will show me these vertical colored stripes down that right hand side to then indicate that some of the, those same passages of text that I coded at no limits to access to information are also coded at other themes such as in this case social justice. So these features alone, I think, demonstrate how in vivo and other types of um, qualitative data analysis softwares makes coding and analyzing the qualitative data much more manageable and facilitates quick access to that relevant data. So back to our quote from that coding overview video. And there's so much more to these programs beyond just what I've gone over so far. So for example, 
Um, in InVivo, you can use word frequency queries to explore your data and then generate word cloud visualizations for use in presentations. You can create other visualizations, such as a comparison diagram to visually explore the convergence and the divergence in your data sources or coded themes. And you can also define attributes about your research data sources for, so for example, a student's race or an ethnicity, and then do comparisons of your coding to examine relationships and patterns by these attributes. And these are all things that we're going to learn about in this workshop. In conclusion, these features and others in qualitative data analysis softwares can help qualitative researchers be more organized, efficient, and thorough in their analyses, and also help them document their analysis process for transparency and replication purposes in ways that manual analyses tend to fall short. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy the workshop. Bye-bye.